Hey everybody, this will get us ready for our Math 1 Semester 1 final. So these are the types of questions you'll see on your final. Okay, so so this is a whole semester, so instead of trying to re-explain everything, I'm hoping you have everything explained, hopefully. But I'm going to plug this 6 in right here and right here. So it's basically 8 times 6 plus 5. So 8 times 6 is 48. 48 plus 5 is 53, okay? So just plug in this wherever you see an X in my function right here. So right here. All right, let's try the next one here. So a scale measures weight to the nearest half pound or 0.5 pounds. Which measurement uh, below shows an appropriate level of precision for the scale? So anything with a 0 0.5 or 0 0.0, 0 0.0 or 0.5. 2.5 gives me 1.0. So if you had a 0, 0.0, so this is the only one right here that has the 0. 0.5. This is rounded to the nearest 0. 0.25. Um, and this is rounded to the nearest unit. These two guys are rounded to the nearest unit. So that one's our, our answer. Okay. All right. So here we're going to simplify. I'm going to distribute 5 times x, 5 times minus 3. So that's going to get me 5x minus 15. And then we'll combine the like terms. We'll combine the 5x with the minus 3x and the minus 15 with the plus 9. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. You'll see I did it in colors, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then the minus 15 plus 9 gets me minus 6. So 2x minus 6. All right, so if f of x equals 7x squared minus 11 and g of x is x squared minus 3x minus 4, we want to find the difference of f minus g. So basically, it's this function minus this function right here. So I'm going to wrap this one with parentheses right here because we got to distribute this minus through. So it's minus x squared and then minus a minus 3x is plus 3x and then minus a minus 4 is plus 4. So when you distribute that through and then combine like terms, the x squareds, we have seven of them. We have minus one of them here. There's a, a one right there. gets us this 6x squared. And then we have the 3x right there. And then the other like terms are these constants. Minus 11 plus 4 gets me minus 7. Okay, as long as I did my math right. All right, write a system of inequalities from this graph. Okay, this one that's going diagonal right here is y equals x. Okay, and since it's below the line y equals x, then it's going to be y is less than x. And it's not less than or equal to because of the dotted line right here. So this line is y is less than x. And this line is y is equal to 4. So y equals 4. Horizontal lines are just y equals a number. And it's below this line. So this one's going to be y is less than 4. And similarly, not less than or equal to, but less than because, uh, whoops, I said 5. It's 4. Let's change that. My bad. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. You know what? I'm going to save this just in case so I don't make a mistake when I'm going over this with my, my students. All right. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to plug in negative 2 right there. So this is an exponential graph. Exponential graphs typically graph a J curve going up like this. Sometimes it's a backwards J curve. It goes like this. These are exponential. They're exponential because X is in the exponent. Okay, and since this is greater than 1, this one's going to be an exponential growth. We don't need to worry about that, but if we, we will in a little bit. We're going to graph this in a little bit. And then if this was like 1 half, it would be an exponential decay function. It would be a backwards j. Anyways, this one says find the value. So we're going to plug in negative 2 right there. So 6 times 5 to the negative 2. And then when you have a negative exponent, you flip it in the denominator and it becomes a positive exponent. So it's 1 over 5 to the positive 2. And 5 squared is 25. So I'm sorry, this is 6 over 5 to the positive 2. The 6 stays put because it doesn't have a negative exponent. There's actually an exponent of 1. Anyway, so 6 over 25. Okay, so write a point slope form. Point slope form, this line is in point slope form. Y minus Y sub 1 equals M times X minus X sub 1. Perpendicular says we only want this slope in this line. The slope of this line is 2 or 2 over 1. So perpendicular slope is to flip it and change the sign. Since this one's positive, this one's going to be negative. Okay, notice how they're reciprocals of each other or inverses of each other. All right, so now I'm going to do 
y minus this y equals m times x minus that x, okay? So we get that. Here's point slope form. It's going to ask you to reference that a lot in this, um, in this review for the final. So um, I just plugged in 7 for y and negative 2 for x. And right here, minus a minus 2 becomes a plus 2. So you'll see that as one of your choices or something like that. And obviously, these are not the same questions. So... Okay, so we're going to graph this guy. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go plus 8, plus 8. So when I do that, I get uh, 2y is less than negative 3x plus 8. And then we want y. So we're going to go divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And that's going to get me y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to graph this plus 4 first and then use my slope and go down 3 to the right 2. And this one's going to be a dotted line. Okay, it's not a solid line. It's going to be a dotted line. So I'm going to plot those points right there. So here's that plus 4 right there. And then the slope is down 3 over 2. So down 3 over 2. I'm going to connect those up with a dotted line right there. And then since it's less than, that means we're going to shade the side that's below this line. So that would be this side right here. So um, uh, something like that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So customers can pick up their own apples at Apple Hill. They can, and Apple Hill's a real place. It's up, uh, it's in California, up towards Lake Tahoe. Um, it's a nice craft fair in the fall. It just, it's still going on, but it mostly ended. But uh, my friend sells uh, crafts, crafty needs up there. It's kind of cool. Anyways, and they have persimmons and apples and apple pie, and they have apple coffee. They have apple everything. So, uh, can you, uh, so customers can pick up their own apples at Apple Hill. They pay $6 to enter. Okay, so this enter fee is the beginning number. It's my B. And $1.75 per pound for the apples. Okay, this per is my slope, my M. So think Y equals MX plus B. So it says write an equation that models the total cost Y for the pounds of X apples. Okay, so it's $1.75 Per pound and they had to pay six dollars to get in okay so um, here's my per y equals mx plus b this is my per number and this is my entry fee my beginning number so there's the answer y equals 1.75x plus six all right okay there's a couple correct ways to do this first i'm going to multiply these exponents powers raised to powers we multiply those so negative two times three is negative six so it's seven to the negative six all right, and anything to a negative exponent goes in the denominator and becomes a positive exponent. The numerator, there is nothing left, so there's a 1 left. So it's 1 over 7 to the 6. And leave it like that, you guys. 7 to the 6 is 7 times 7 times 7, 6 sevens, And that's a big, big number. Most calculators overload on that, so they just want this answer right here. Okay, it's called match the answer game. When you start getting towards an answer, you start glancing to see if your answer is there. All right, this one is an exponential graph. It's exponential because x is in the exponent. And this is less than 1, so this is going to be an exponential decay. It's going to go a backwards j. And so how I like to figure, is it a backwards j or is it going to be a j, is I do the 0, 1 trick. And you're thinking, what is that? Let x equal 0, x equal 1 right here and, and solve. So if I plugged in x equals 0, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So we get 4 times 1 or 4. And then when I plug in x equals 1, this is 0.5 or half. 4 times 0.5 is 2. So this one's going to be 4. This one's going to be 2. So I'm going to graph 0, 4, 1, comma, 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, graph those guys, these guys right here. So 0, 4 is right here, over 1, up 2 is right there. Okay, now if you can't see your exponential graph, plug in 2. You can plug in 2, I think I did that, yeah. When I plug in 2, 0.5 squared, well 5 squared is 25, so 0.5 squared is 0.25, and 4 times 0.25 is 1. So over 2, up 1. Can you see your your J curve, your backwards J curve going like that. So that is an exponential decay. It's decay because it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. Okay. So a bean plant grows at a constant rate for a month. 
Okay, so 10 days after 10 days, the plant is 30 centimeters. So I'm seeing the order pairs 10, 30. After 20 days, the plant is 90 centimeters, so 20, 90. So write an equation in point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, that models the height of the plant y after x uh, days. Okay, so let's write the order pairs 10, 30, 20, 90. Those are my x1, y1s, and x2, y2s, and we're going to use slope. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The y's go on top, the x's go on bottom. Remember, it's all open notes on your finals. Uh, at least with our school. So um, write these formulas down, this slope formula. It's good to have in your notes right here. All right, anyways, 90 minus 30 is 60, and then 20 minus 10 is 10. 60 divided by 10 is 6. Okay, so we can use either this uh, x1 and this y1, or this is my x1, y1. It doesn't matter. There's infinitely many correct answers because there's infinitely many points the line goes through. But either one of those would be terrific answers right there. And those both give me the same slope-intercept form. It's not asking for slope-intercept form, but they both simplify. If I solved this one for y, distributing the 6 through, adding 30 to both sides, distributing the 6 through on this one, adding 90 to both sides, both would get me this one. But they're asking for point-slope form, so it's either one of those guys. Okay. Mary charges $15 per hour to babysit. Okay, she ba babysat on Friday night for five hours. Okay, and then she babysat again on Saturday. It doesn't say on Saturday how many hours, so we'll just call it X. So she earns a total of $135. For how many hours did Mary babysit on Saturday? So it's asking us to choose an answer, two answers, I'm sorry. So one for the equation that models this, so $15 for five hours, and then again on X hours. So it's going to be 15 times uh, 5 plus X. So it looks like this one equals how much she earned, 135. So I'll circle this one. And then just solve, you guys. So probably distribute the 15. Well, you can think of this. 15 times what number gets me 135? Well, I know 15 times 10 is 150, and this is 15 down from 150, so this is 15 times 9. So this must be um, uh, this must be 9 altogether in here to get 15 times 9, so x must be 4. That's one way to solve it. There's other ways to solve that, but those are your correct answers on that. Okay, uh, use the coordinate, this coordinate right here of the label point to find the point slope of the equation. Okay, let's find the slope first. So here's x1, y1. Remember, y minus this y equals m times x minus this x. The slope is, it's up here at 4, it goes down here to negative 5. So the slope is down 9 over 3. So 9, negative 9 over 3 is going to get me negative 3. And then, so let's just go ahead and plug these points in for x. So x, that goes right here. 3 goes right here. And negative 5 goes right here. So y minus minus 5 is y plus 5 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. Okay, so now here we're going to use substitution method to solve this system of equations. Remember, these answers are x comma y answers. So y equals x minus 2. That goes in for this y next to the 5. I'm going to wrap that in parentheses right there. Okay, so this y, I'm just putting in x minus 2. Now it's time to distribute this 5 through. So 5x minus 10 when we distribute that 5 through. And then we'll combine these like terms. 2x plus 5x is 7x. And then we'll go plus 10 plus 10 to both sides, and we get 28. And 7 goes into 28 four times. Okay, not done. We've got to figure out y. So I'm going to plug in x equals 4 right here. So uh, y equals 4 minus 2 or 2. So the answers are always x comes first, y comes second. These are in alphabetical order. x comes before y in the alphabet. So 4 comma 2 is our answer. Okay. Now, if this was on your test and it was multiple choice, I am, I am guaranteed you're going to see 2 comma 4 is one of the answers. So just careful. Okay. So solve. First thing here, let's distribute the 5 through. So 5x plus 35. 5 times 7 is 35. All right. So what I like to do is put all the x's over here and all the numbers over here. So I'm going to go minus 5x minus 5x underneath the 2x 
plus 1, plus 1 underneath the 35. So that's going to get me. These red guys are going to cancel. These blue guys are going to cancel. 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. Over here, 35 plus 1 is 36. And negative 3 goes into 36, negative 12 times. Okay, so there's our answer. There's no y in on this one. It's just x. Write a recursive formula. So a recursive formula all depends on this a sub 1. So first of all, we're going to say a sub 1 equals 4. Okay, so this is my first term. Your first, recursive formula always deals with the first term. And then recognize, is it geometric or is it uh, arithmetic? So, so 4 plus 3 is 7. Let's make sure it goes plus 3. 7 plus 3 is 10. Yeah, I think so. 10 plus 3, yep. 13, 13 plus 3. So it's arithmetic. So a sub n is going to be our formula. I don't know if your book says f of n with parentheses. I, I, I'm used to saying a sub n, which is the same as f of n. a sub 1 equals 4, and a sub n equals a sub 1 plus 3. Okay, so it's always a sub 1 plus, uh, plus d, or d is 3 in this case, the common difference. It goes up by 3. So this is our answer right here, okay, actually including this right here. Okay, don't forget the a sub 1. Okay, Matt had $96, which is 8 times as much money as Kate had. So we'll let Kate be x. How much money did Kate have? So if it's 8 times as much as Kate's, then 8x equals that 96. So x equals 12. 8 goes into tw uh, 96 12 times. So Kate has 12 bucks. All right, what's the explicit formula? Okay, again, we got to see, is it arithmetic or geometric? Okay, let's see if it's arithmetic. 5 plus 5 gets me 10. 10 plus 5, nope, it's not arithmetic, because 10 plus 5 would be 15. It looks like it's geometric. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, yep, 20 times 2 is 40, 40 times 2 times 2. It's, um, it's uh, uh, geometric. So it's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1 times d to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so a, write this down, a for geometric, this is geometric, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, where a sub 1 is this first term, and r is how the ratio, how much it goes up, it goes times 2, times 2, times 2. So that's our formula right there, just plugging in those numbers. All right, which of these statements is true for f of x? Okay, these ones usually ask for the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is when x equals 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power equals 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. So the y-intercept is 0, 3 right here. Okay, so it's that one. Okay, so where is uh, that makes this equal to 0? And then anything to the 0 equals 1, 1 times this number. Okay. All right, what's the solution to the system of equations graphed? Okay, this is kind of something that, these are these lines right here. This, this line right here is this dude, and this line right here is this dude right here. Don't worry about these. Just find out where they intersect. They intersect right there over 6 up 9. Okay, careful, that's 9. Okay, they might do 9 comma 6, but our answer is 6 comma 9. Okay. All right, so let's solve for this guy. Okay, first I'm going to go minus 5, minus 5. That's going to make this 10. But I still have the negative in front of this x over 2. So we have negative x over 2 greater than or equal to 10. And then to get rid of this 2 and the negative, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. When I multiply this by negative 2, remember when you multiply or divide by negative, this inequality flips in the opposite direction. So let's multiply by negative 2 and it flips. So x is less than or equal to negative 20. Okay, let's keep going. So on what interval is the function of this graph increasing? It's increasing only right here. So from x equals negative 2 to x equals positive 3. Okay, so that's the increasing. Now if it said where is it constant, it would be constant from x equals negative 4 to x equals negative 2. Constant is where it's going right here. It decreases right here, and it decreases right here. I'm guessing this keeps going and going and going, so that's why they didn't choose the decreasing, because there's two answers, and they just keep going. So it's constant right here, but to answer this question, it's increasing on this interval from x equals negative 2 to x equals negative 3. Okay, 
is it equal to uh, well they wouldn't give you that choice of what first of all i don't think but it's not it's it's um it's it's just a point right there a point doesn't increase or decrease okay all right john and julie deposit money into their savings account at the end of each month the table shows their balances so here's their pattern and if their pattern continues uh and nothing else happens they're just doing that who's gonna have more money at the end okay well look at john's john starts with 60 a lot more money than julie's okay but john adds 40 to get to 100 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 so this one's arithmetic this one's geometric point five, excuse me 50 cents times two is a dollar dollar times two is two bucks four bucks times two anything that's exponentially growing will be will gr increase a lot more than anything arithmetic so julie's going to have more money in the run because Hers is exponential. Hers is uh, multiplying uh, more. So I think the, the textbook says it's, gr it's growing by a factor of two, something like that. Okay. So just find out who's exponential. That one's growing more. A race lasts for 3.14 hours. How many seconds did the race last? Okay. So you just multiply this times 60 to get it in minutes and then because there's 60 minutes in each hour multiply it by 60 again to get it in seconds so i'm multiplying it by 60 minutes per hour and 60 seconds per minute now check this out the hours will cancel because i got one on top here and one on bottom the minutes here will cancel these minutes and i'm left with seconds so when we do that we get 11,304 seconds Okay, here we go. So this graph shows the distance a remote control goes. So what's the car speed? You need to find out where it is at one. Here it is at one and then just go up to the line and go over. The distance is 20 feet per minute. Okay, so that's how fast that car goes is 20 feet per minute. It's a slow car. <laughs> Must be uh, hot wheels or something. I don't know. Okay, we're going to solve. I'm going to go minus 5, minus 5. Careful when you're subtracting. Negative 11 minus 5 is negative 16. All right, and then since we have this negative in front of the x, negative x equals negative 16. So divide both sides by negative and you get x equals positive 16. That's the answer. All right, we're almost done, you guys. So select the correct statement about the function represented in this table. All right, well, let's take a look at these y's. These are going up by ones, plus one, plus one, plus one. So, so we need to focus on these x's. Four to 16, we'll see times four, 16 times four, 64 times four, yep, 256 times four. So these are going by fours. So it's definitely not a linear. If it was linear, it would go plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, or plus four, plus four, plus four, or down seven, down seven, down seven. But these are going times four times four so it's definitely not linear so you can get rid of the linear ones anything that says linear it's exponential because it's going up times two so which one so it's either this one so exponential function because the factor between each and y value each x value and y value is constant it's this one let's go check this one exponential because the y value is increased by an equal factor that, that's code word plus so we're going to use this one right here so that's our answer okay uh whoops i think i circled the wrong one uh increased by an equal factor whoops i'm sorry by an equal factor sorry this one's the addition one my bad i was telling my colleagues i got a 96 percent on this final hooray i make mistakes all the time doesn't your math teacher make mistakes I do all the time. Anyways, I'll sure sound smart when I teach this to my students today. <laughs> okay, is this graph a function? Why? Well, I do the vertical line test. And if you drew a vertical line down through there, it would intersect it in more than one spot. So it fails the vertical line test. So if you drew this vertical line through, um, it, it fails the vertical line test, okay? So it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test, okay? So the Fibonacci sequence is... Um, and this is just confusing right here, you guys. All this says is the f of n, this is my nth term, equals the term before that. That's what f of n minus 1 means, plus f of n minus 2. That means two terms before the f of n term. Okay, so here they give me f of 8 is 21 and f of 9 is 34. So what's f of 10? So f of 10 would be f of 9 plus f of 8 or 34 plus 21 and those add up to 55 okay remember that fibonacci sequence i think we discussed that a little bit all right solve this guy for 
x. So we got to get this guy by itself first. So it has a minus 7, so I'm going to go plus 7, plus 7 to both sides. And then I'm going to take this and divide both sides by k. Get rid of this k. So x equals 21 over k. That's our answer. All right, use the elimination method. Okay, so the elimination method is to make sure that either the x's are opposites or the y's, and the y's here are opposites. So if they weren't, we'd manipulate them to make them opposite. So these guys are already, this is positive 2y, this is negative 2y, so these are ready to add these two equations together. So when I add them together, those cancel. 3x plus x is 4x. 26 plus 6 is 32, and then 4 goes into 32 eight times. Now remember, there's a y answer also, so we can substitute 8 in for x here. I don't want to because there's a negative. Or substitute in 8 right here. I'm going to put it in next to that 3. So 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2y equals 26. So I'll subtract 24 from both sides, and when I do that, we get 2y equals 2, so y equals 1. Remember, x, y is our answer. All right. Okay, so again, use the elimination method. Okay, I can make these both 3x and negative 3x, and, or 2y and negative 2y. I'm going to choose the 2y's because this one's already negative, and I don't have to worry about mixing up my negatives. So I'm going to multiply this whole equation times 2, times 2, times 2. Everything times 2. Okay, and I just slid this guy right over here. Now they're ready. These guys are ready because these are opposites. I can add this plus this, this plus this, this plus this. And that gets me the two y's cancel. 5x equals 25. So x equals 5. Okay, so we got to plug in x equals 5. We can plug it in right here or right here or even with this red guy right here. It doesn't matter. I think I chose uh, next to the 3. Yeah, so... 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 2y equals 11. Subtract 15 from both sides. 11 minus 15 is negative 4. And 2 goes into negative 4, negative 2 times. Remember, x, y is my answer. Okay? All right. Okay, what's the slope? Uh, what's the slope-intercept form of this equation? Okay, well, there's the intercept right there at 6. We just got to figure out the slope. So it goes down 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 is negative, um, did I, I'm sorry, it goes down 8. Sorry about that. That's up there at 6. I wasn't looking at my scale. This is 10, so this is 6. So it goes down 8 over 4. Oh boy, I made another mistake. Let's fix that. Down 8 over 4. Sorry. So that's going to change this to a negative 2. Sorry. Negative 2. That's my first run through. So that's going to make this a negative 2. There we go. There's our correct answer. All right, let me save that again. Sorry. Behind the scenes, this lesson took me about five hours to build. So. Not that it matters, but uh, uh, that's why I make lots of mistakes. I get brain tired after a while. It's right now at 5.30 in the morning while I'm doing this. So at the beginning of uh, year one, Jack invests $800 at an annual compound interest rate of 4%. So this is my beginning number that goes in front of the parentheses. So it could be this one or this one right here. Okay, he makes no deposits or no withdrawals from the account. Which, ex uh, which explicit formula can be used to find the account balance um, at the beginning of year six? And what is the balance? Okay, all right. Um, uh, uh, well, I don't have an exponential uh, feature on my calculator here. Darn it, I should have thought about that. But get your calculator out, and it's going to be either this one or this one. These are my explicit compound interest formulas. Well, let's just figure out. When we plug in 1, it's going to give us $800. If I plugged in 1 right here, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything, including parentheses, to the 0 equals 1. 1 times 800 is 800. So it must be this one right here. Okay, this one would get me just, um, if I plugged in 1 right here, whatever 1.04 to the 1 is, which is 1.04, um, that wouldn't get me 800 right there when you plugged in 1. So anyways, that's the answer right there. Okay. All right, almost done. Okay, graph this solution. Okay, this is going to be a dotted line, so I'm going to go up here at plus 4 right here, and then use the slope, negative 2, which is negative 2 over 1, so down 2 over 1. It's a solid line, so I'm going to graph that solid line right there. And this one's less than or equal to, so it's everything shaded below. 
This one's greater than, um, so it's going to be everything above this line. So let's go down to minus 2, put a point right here, and then from there, down 1 over 4. So from here, down 1 over 4. I'm going to put a point there and make a dotted line because it's dotted. And greater than, it's going to be above. Okay, so something like that. All right, my shading kind of overlapped a little bit, so my finger slipped when I was uh, doing that. So, All right, four more. So what type of function is represented here? This one's exponential because x is in the exponent, and since this is greater than 1, it's exponential growth. If this was less than 1, like a half or a third or a fifth, this would be exponential decay. But it's definitely exponential because x is in the exponent. So exponential growth function because 4 is greater than 1. Okay, the three could be anything. All right, so here's two functions. Here we're going to add these together. So I'm just going to slip this 3x plus 5 underneath this negative 7x minus 4. So there it is right there, and I'm just adding. So straight down, add negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9. So there's the answer right there. All right, two more. Okay, what's the domain and range? Domain is how much it goes left and right. It goes left to right here at negative 1, and it goes right to 3. The range is how much it goes up and down. It goes down here at negative 5, and it goes up, 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 right here to positive 4. Something like that, okay? All right, so um, let's see. Did I do that right? Did it, yeah, that looks right. Okay, one more. Okay, if we wanted to shift the graph, this graph, y equals negative 2x plus 5, down 7, then we're just going to subtract 7 from this plus 5. We're going to keep the slope the same, so it's going to be negative 2x minus 2. 5 minus 7 is minus 2. All right, you guys, good luck on your final. I hope that helps, and, and take care.